Cover Coven, everybody. I'm Paula. Welcome back. I'm Ali. Wow, it's been so long. It's been so long. I missed you. <laughs> anyway, <Okay. laughs> that's it. So I have no more emotion. Welcome to part two of this very exciting yet disgusting series called Colonia Dignidad and Paul Schaefer. Mm-hmm. Today we're gonna get into some disgusting stuff. That if I'm just gonna warn you guys, it's not pretty. It's not like you know. Nope. I don't know. How, I I've tried to like think of a serial killer that <laughs> that you know you hear details it? about it and it's mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, but I I can't think of one right now. I you know I haven't had that with a lot of well, whatever if I've heard in detail from a serial killer or like of a serial killer, I haven't had that feeling. Yeah, because the circumstances, I guess, are very different from what this guy did to children. True, and I think that's why it's more gag-inducing. It's, than... it's just that we're part of a true crime community, right? We we hear yeah. uh, stories about abductions and torture mm-hmm. and stuff like that. To be honest, this is the first time I've done research on a a dude, a a person, and I've mm-hmm. literally gagged. Yeah. Like, I've literally been so disgusted. You know what? It's the type of disgusted... Because when I was, like, reading about the things that he would do and all that, um, it ma- it's it's a type of disgusted that makes you feel dirty. Like, it ma- it's, it, it's, like, inside of your skin. It, like, it makes your skin crawl, like, inside. Yeah. You feel dirty just reading about... Because I can't understand how somebody can be that evil. And it's just the other thing is that since we're both from Chile, mm-hmm. it's very close to home. So yeah. it's it's worse that we live in a country that literally permitted that this had. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, it permitted. It per- yeah, it permitted this guy to have a, like a pedophile. It was a pedophile's paradise. He was a serial, like a serial pedophile. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get it. I I get into that as yeah. well because um yeah, but I'll talk about it. I got I I went in all psychology on him. <laughs> oh okay okay so Sorry to hear that <laughs> we're gonna start part okay. two with um the dictatorship that happened in Chile yeah that honestly people don't know about either they don't no actually yeah no yeah yeah people don't know about it that much. Um, so while all of this was happening, we were talking about this last episode, um, that basically kids were being brainwashed and like, you know, given pills against their will and girls were being sterilized and stuff like that. The embassy, so the German embassy knew exactly, they knew clearly what the doctor was doing, that he was like letting, basically he was letting all the shit happen in his hospital. Um, so they knew that that was, that, that he was doing that, that he was letting this happen. And all that. So, but the German embassy still backed them up. Mm -hmm. Like, they were still trying to protect the colony. So, while the embassy, the German embassy, was trying to protect the colony, the colony board of directors was starting, had just started a relationship, like, uh, relations with Chile's military dictatorship. So let's get into that. September 11th of 1973, um, uh, Augusto Pinochet assumes power after a military coup. Um, These were really, really scary times in Chile. Um, What happened is that on this day, all of Chile armed forces, we're talking about Army, Navy, Air Force, and police, Mm -hmm. they all got together to forcefully remove uh, President um, Allende, like, Salvador Allende was the president, and they just didn't... Okay, I understand. A lot of people didn't agree with 
how he was running his government. It's the same as if this were to happen right now. And they're like, I just don't agree what Trump is doing. Mm -hmm. And so all of the military forces just go and try to force him out of the, the White House. Yeah. That's technically what happened. Um, so they they go there. They're like, they had the whole place, the whole um, La Moneda, which is technically, it's our White House. It's our, it's our White House. Um, they had the whole place surrounded. And that's when uh, Salvador Allende, who was inside, like he had nowhere to go. And he's like, they're going to force me out, like whether I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And he committed suicide. Apparently. Of, apparently. So it is said that he commit. Okay, so he committed suicide. That's the that's the official story. But there is theories that he was actually murdered or assassinated, as you call it, um, inside of the palace. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I literally put here, said to have been murdered, but that's up for debate. Um, so after um, this happened, Augusto Pinochet, um, he assumed power. And that's when everything went downhill. So because they had already been in talks with Paul Schaefer, this is when the colony became technically a torture center for the military, like for the military for the military, yeah. that's what it was. So this was, was one of the torture centers because yeah, people... It wasn't just the torture center, yeah. but it was the most... I think it was the most um, convenient one. Oh, yeah, because it was in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. Yeah, people were, were being brought to like stadiums, like the National Stadium in, uh, in mm -hmm. Santiago. People were being shot on the streets. People were being tortured. Anybody yep. who, went, uh, who went against Pinochet's... Um, line of thinking was mm -hmm. dead yeah I, like we like you always hear people like somebody that knew somebody who literally got arrested and tortured for owning a book that was banned oh yeah yeah banned books so banned music uh anything that wasn't in line yeah. with the military dictatorship like there was like i always ask my mom because my mom was around 12 years old when this happened my dad was a little bit older and i always ask them and like it's just it's it makes me sad like <sighs> that my parents had to go through that when they were children they would have to line up let's say so there were curfews um oh yeah there were lineups for food so the food was rationed per family um, there were lineups, so you had to, let's say, line up eight hours a day. Lineups and lineups of food, like, to go to this little center, so, like, kiosks, where they would have the, um, to go get rice, let's say. And then, um, your other family member had to go line up to that other kiosk for eight hours to go get milk. Right. And they would give you, like, a little bit of rice exactly for four people, but you had six people in your... Like, you would get, like, a little bit of rice and, um, or, like, they would give you, okay, so you're a family of six, which in my family, they were a family of five at the time, so, like, my grandparents, um, my uncles and my mom, um, they would go and, like, line up for a can of Spam, because that's what they would eat. My mom cannot smell, see, or she hates Spam. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> It's like, Pam is like tuna. If whoever who doesn't know, Spam is um, it's ham. It's canned meat. It's canned meat, like canned ham, technically. Yeah. So they would like line up. It's okay, you're a family of five. Here's your rice. Here's your, your can of Spam. And that's what you have to eat for the next three days. Mm -hmm. um, everything was rationed. Like, it's just... No, my it was it was my I live in um well Ali used to live here. We live in like the yeah. the um one of the biggest cities in Chile and my mm -hmm. grandfather, God rest his soul, in that time he he worked at the uh what's it called? El Eduardo de la Barra. Okay. In the center it's a school in a, a high school in the center yeah. of the city. And he would people who would be like protesting um against the, the dictatorship Mm -hmm. The cops would come and start shooting them all, and he would yeah. he would he would work as security for the high school, and he would take people mm -hmm. from the protest and hide them inside and, like, the school. Pull them in. Yeah, my dad told me about this. So my dad went to that school actually. Oh really? 
Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> um, but he would tell me about that, how they would, like, hide. And he, they actually, so my, my grandmother's, like, not biological grandmothers, but it's two ladies who raised my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, they owned a bar in, in El Barón. Mm-hmm. So it's like a hill, I guess. Like, right, it's like coming right down, like the city, the downtown is almost right there, but it's not really downtown. So, like, people will come up the hills. Where the, um, La Avenida Argentina. A little bit more towards Viña. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, people have no idea what we're talking about, but it's okay. Yeah, no, they have no idea, but it's just, we're, we're trying to, you know. So they would come up to um, my grandma's bar and then like they, I think they would like, I, I think I remember asking and like, sometimes it would hide people like behind like the bar. Yeah. Because they had to, like they were like running from the protests and the police. And there's, we're talking about the 70s, like mid 70s here. Everything is on film. Like you can find footage of this, yeah. of the police literally with like, ma- not machine guns, but like with like uh, metralletas, like rifles. Mm-hmm. Is that? No, machine guns um, are metal. No, not rifles. Machine guns. Mm-hmm. With, like, machine guns, like, standing there, um, like, creating a, a barrier for people who are trying to save the other people who are getting beat to death. Yeah. With, like, you know, like, batons, whatever that's called, like, the police batons mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So it's just, and you can see, like, there's footage of this. Like, if you, if you ever watch a movie, like, The Pianist or Schindler's List, you know, about Nazi Germany, think about that, but with Nazis... Um, doing that to their own people. We're talking about yeah. concentration camps. We're talking about torture, um, mm-hmm. everything. But it was to their own people. Like these were Chileans doing this to Chileans. To Ch- yeah, it's it's so fucked up. It is. But this is up. this is something that this this topic is something that you cannot talk about like at the dinner table because people. I'm not gonna say it's like Holocaust deniers. But people don't think that anything wrong was being done. Yeah. But. They thought that they needed that. Yeah. Which is sad. Which is sad. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Ale and I were talking about this earlier. The only reason that we're like very in air quotes thankful is because we didn't turn out like Venezuela. Yeah. Like we were lucky. Like the what, what our country is now a lot of things are due to the fact that we had that happen. Yeah, it's like Germany Um, now. Exactly, exactly. But at the same time, like, we were one of the lucky ones that they were able to shut that down on time. Oh, yeah. And it didn't go on like it did in, like, Venezuela and, like, it did, like, it's Cuba, you know what I mean? Like, Venezuela is now just getting free. Yeah. No, it's, it's 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 a really difficult subject, but... It's um, mm-hmm. it's something really important to the story. Yeah. No, it is. So let's go back to the colony. So the colony was far away from everything. Um, the closest thing, as we said, it was 35, 35 kilometers away. And it was like a small town. Well, it was a city. But a small city. <laughs> um, which means they were able to torture the victims however they wanted and freely because nobody was going to find out then just bury them in the same place if they die and they and they tortured um, people inside the colony in the basements yeah so nobody would hear anything <laughs> yeah so um one of the torture victims explained how he was blindfolded they put wet cottons in his ears and then they put a leather helmet on top of his head and he had been detained before, um, but he said that this type of torture, to him, he, it was something that he has never, he had never experienced before. This was very professional. They knew what they were doing. Oh yeah. Um, and so he said how they knew that if you had feelings like feelings in your teeth, if they put, if they electrocuted that part like inside of your mouth. It, it will go straight to the nerve. Oh, God. And that was going to hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, my God. Uh. And that's what they did to him. And he was like, it's like something like, how would they know that? Like, that is very specific. Like, they will have to be fucking masters in torture to know that. So how did they know how to do that? How did they know? So let's go back to the Nazi ties because the colony was mostly 
Nazi fugitives. Yeah. And they brought in, like, Nazi generals, because Paul Schiffer was a Nazi general. A corporal. And a corporal. A corporal. Or yeah. Whatever. But the thing is that since we were harboring Nazis in this country, they were all in yeah. the south of Chile, where the colony was. So let's ask them how to torture people correctly. Exactly. So why do you think that Augusto Pinochet was in the talks with them already? Because he knew he was he knew what he was planning to do. Oh yeah. And he knew that they wouldn't say no. People like this are disturbed, and they would be on his side. Yeah. So until this day, actually, there is uh, eleven hundred plus people who were detained and disappeared. And most likely, because all of the people that they took, except for this one guy who I can't remember his name now, I wrote it down somewhere. I also have I also have names of like two people who escaped. Yeah, because they see this guy, he was able to save them, save himself, kind of, mm-hmm. because he was from Austria, and they were able to claim him back. Yeah, this guy was Russian, the one I have. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, no, he's like they're not from Chile. And then they're coming back, and that's how they saved themselves. If not, they would have died like everybody else. Yeah. So, so they had mass graves. You know how the, the in concentration camps with the with the Jews, um, they couldn't like cremate everybody. So they had mass graves. The same mm-hmm. thing happened here. There were gas chambers. There were mass graves. There were torture. There was torture. There was. Uh, abuse experiments Mm -hmm. everything everything in that happened in nazi germany happened here to back to the nazi ties a little little unknown fact which it was hard for me to find i knew that there was um eventually i found it on wikipedia Mm -hmm. but it's not in a lot of the history is that joseph mengel mengel mengala or whatever mengala Mm -hmm. fuck um, he was the angel of death in Auschwitz, yeah. The, in Auschwitz, um, in the concentration camps, he was actually at the colony. Yeah, yeah. And there is like there is proof from the CIA and somewhere else, like something else. Chilean that he records was. also. Like... Yeah, Chilean records that like he was uh, during the colony. He was at the colony. Like this is the type of people that was there. Yeah, and that helped. Okay, that helped Pinochet torture all these people. I'm just, I I get mad. (sighs) Okay. So yeah, until this day, um, there is 1,100 plus people that is still missing. And they never found them, most likely buried. And if they weren't able to escape, um, most likely buried at at the colony or in the other, like other concentration camps. I'm saying concentration camps because it, it maybe it wasn't like, the ones in Germany, but it was pretty bad. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's a type of concentration camp. It's a type of concentration camp. But for camp. example, you're talking stadiums. We're talking the national stadium, yeah. you know, where the where big yeah. games are played in soccer. You know, I've been there for concerts and people mm-hmm. were killed and tortured there. Um, like mass, they will bring them in in masses. Yeah. And, and shoot them all. Yeah, and shoot them all. Yeah, uh, we're talking places... And uh, I know primarily in Santiago. I don't know many many mm-hmm. here in Valparaíso, but in Santiago, you know, there was all over the place shootings and um, mm-hmm. things like that's that. That's where the main protesters, like that's when the pro, that's where the protest protests were. Yeah, and the other um, and the other places that were big, you know, targets were schools and mm-hmm. uh, universities primarily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, the universities. Yeah. That was, yeah, it's scary. <sighs> okay. Anyway, so in all this happening, actually, there was a lot of illegal weapon activity happening in the colony as well, which, okay, so 2005, when everything was like, this is when this died down, like the colony actually lasted until like 1961 all the way to 2007. Dude. Dude. Yeah. Like, why nobody shut this down before? It's just, I, it's literally, it just blows my mind. Yeah. That they let it happen for this long. And so, uh, authorities said that they found machine guns, rocket launcher, launchers, rifles, and 
all their weapons, like weaponry, all around the grounds of the uh, of the colony. Mm-hmm. Like, buried on, like, in caches and stuff like that. So, like, they found them. And it is said to be, so, said to have been the biggest, largest arsenal ever found in private hands in Chile. Imagine. Imagine. And so I have a theory that I was telling Paula about that, that I think that most likely it was the military who gave them that because they were planning to go to war. It's most likely, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to start talking about... Oh, yeah. So, and stuff like that? Yeah. so thanks to uh, Schaefer and Pinochet's, you know, bestie relationship... Uh, Mm -hmm. Pinochet let Schaefer import and export freely from the colony without paying taxes. So these people Mm -hmm. were uh, inside the colony were, you know, uh, exporting agricultural products Mm -hmm. and the leaders inside were getting all the money. People inside the colony did not get a peso. I would say a cent, but it's not a cent. It's a peso. So they didn't get (laughs) they didn't get anything. Yeah. So Colonia Dignidad turned into a Jonestown sort of place that we mentioned before. Women, men, mm-hmm. children were separated and put into forced labor. Uh, Schaefer was called Der Permanent Onkel. The Permanent Uncle. He was a Christ-like Ugh. figure. I know, right? It's disgusting. He was a Christ-like figure in the colony. The people in the colony were to confess their sins to Schaefer and do as he said or they would be punished. Mm. In the colony, Schaefer had long gray-white hair and a glass eye caused by an accident with a fork when he was a child. He should have just killed it. Killed. <laughs> should have just killed it. <laughs> the fork should have just penetrated his skull. Yeah, you know. So... While women and girls in the colony were known to have bound breasts, modest clothing, and bad hygiene, the men and boys were treated the exact opposite. They were given good clothing, were very perfumed, and dressed nicely. Um, I mentioned the thing about men's meetings where women weren't allowed to, mm-hmm. to go and set, except into a little room. So parents and their children would be separated, as we said, and the smallest children would grow up being taught that their parents died and they were basically saved by the colony. Um, oh God. So, I'm going to get into the abuse. Mm-hmm. Schaefer was known to have long, quote, shower sessions with young boys mm-hmm. up to teens in which they would have the boy, which Schaefer would have the boys sing to him, and then they would all have showers, and then he would molest them. Felipe, That's so sad. Felipe a survivor of Schaefer, abused at nine mm-hmm. years old, says, quote, Schaefer would quote, well, I mean, Schaefer would shower all the boys. He came to my part of the room and told me I had, com- I had been committing sexual acts with my roommates. He pressured me into admitting something I didn't do. He said that if I didn't confess, he would tell my father, whom I didn't know, and that I wouldn't be able to talk to him ever again. Felipe would be abused from 9 to 17 years old. Schaefer would... What? They were saying how... Uh... I wrote it down somewhere. So he would, for all of the years that he, this shit was going on, he abused at least one, like, it was a different child. Every or a day. Because he had it every single day. Yeah. So Schaefer would make the boys touch him and masturbate him and then would try to penetrate them. And he had a special jar of Vaseline in his nightstand. He would sometimes oh. have several boys lay face down on a bed masturbate and then he would ejaculate all over their backs and they weren't allowed to shower afterwards they would have to sleep that way Schaefer would say quote everything I do is according to the bible and to the word of god fuck you man I I actually that makes me so upset I can't even like I just I feel Like, how can somebody be that evil? I just... I I feel so sad for the kids, but... It, why didn't anybody kill him? I know. Like, earlier. Yeah. What the fuck? Okay, so... uh, 
why would these boys allow Schaefer to do such horrific things to them? Well, Schaefer had what was called a sprinter, or a chosen one. This was in German. Uh, when a boy was chosen, he would have special privileges over the rest. He wasn't punished, nor had to do, like, hard labor. And all they had to do in return was satisfy Schaefer sexually. This is the reality that they knew. This is everything they knew. So, so having Schaefer molest them or have them satisfy Schaefer sexually was better than everything else they really had to live through. And this guy would have like, for example, he had like a boy, right? Like, like an eight-year-old yeah. boy. He would molest them until the boy was like 15. And then he would be like, oh, you're ugly. I don't want you anymore. And these kids would fall into a huge depression because they wanted to be chosen. They wanted to be like yeah. his right-hand boy. And they really didn't know anything else. So they would say that they would they would feel like disgusting doing the things that they did they would feel like mm -hmm. disgusted with themselves but this guy was the only orientation they had i mean yeah they took their parents away yeah schaefer was god he was everything to everyone in the colony he would preach about the bible and have god talk through him but no one in the colony was allowed to have a bible he was the only uh, leadership people had. And if you disobeyed him, he would beat you with a stick, with a hose, or have you under arrest without food for weeks. And sometimes it would be worse. Oh my god. So if Schaefer was this way with men, how was he with women? Well, he hated women. He would call them Saviv, which means pig woman, and other insults. Young ladies, he would call them goose or chickens, Jesus. and he would treat them like an inferior class. And this was, like, this was indoctrinated into men's minds as well. Yeah. So, Pinochet, the dictator at the time, would often yeah. visit the colony and would be received with a choir of children. Everybody would be dressed nicely. <laughs> People would call him, you know, Mr. President and would treat him like a king. Then he would get up on stage, you know, after the whole presentation, tell them how great they were doing, how proud he was, and he would even cry. Oh my god, go fuck yourself. He would further validate people's feelings, that they were in a great place despite everything that was going on. They were like inside this little bubble, and he would, he would tell them how great people, how the great they were, and they were like, hmm, I'm being abused and beat every day. But it must be so much better than what everybody outside is living. See, this is what, what, what I wanted to say earlier. So, you think about cults and sex and stuff. Sex, sect, yeah, sex, cults and stuff like yeah. that. And you think, okay, let's say Jonestown. That's literally a bunch of adults that decided to go with him, yeah. and so forth with like other cults. It makes me extremely mad that these were children that didn't know better oh yeah it's everything they knew like yeah they call it a cult but it's because that's all they knew they didn't know better mm. they were separated from their families how are they supposed to learn yeah and of course that's what they were of course they were the victims i mean there's no denying there's no yeah. other way of saying it but there's no there's no denying it exactly but it's just, it makes me upset that it's just like, they're, they're little, like they're defenseless yeah. children. And you know, these children, like we're talking about children that came from Germany, but we're also talking about Chilean children as well. Like Schaefer yeah. at, at some point had like a fixation for Chilean children. And what I'm saying mm -hmm. is like a brownish color, you know, sk uh, tannish skin. You know, they were a lot shorter than the other kids because Germans are very tall. And we're talking about... They looked like children. They looked like, yeah. And inside they had adults and stuff, but nobody could talk to each other. So obviously, obviously nobody mm -hmm. knew what was going on. And outside, you know, the context in Chile, people were preoccupied with uh, what was going on. 
in, exactly. in, in terms of the dictatorship. And nobody really knew, just as, what, just as what happened with Nazi Germany, nobody really knew what was going on. Like, they had suspicions, but everything came out after the dictatorship. Mm-hmm. Nobody was like, hmm, that colony in the middle of nowhere seems suspicious. Yeah. And nobody was allowed in. And, and that's the thing is like that, that they were so preoccupied with other things and they put a facade of like, we're a very good, honest <laughs> Christian community. Yeah. Leave us alone. Is that, and then this whole dist- dictatorship started happening. Like there were already things happening before the dictatorship in Chile that I think it, that was their, that was their, um, their way of getting away with it. And it's not that I do blame the German embassy though. Oh. Because they knew exactly what was happening. But it's just and they that just... The, it wasn't convenient to go against exactly. the Chilean government at that time. Yeah. Exactly. Because they had, yeah, they were technically harboring all of the people from Germany that, you know. Okay. But yeah, that's how they were able to get away with it. It's just that they were able to do exactly the fuck they wanted. Like, anything they wanted. Schaefer created a pedophile paradise. He yeah. had all the kids that he wanted to molest all the time that he wanted. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. Okay, so after the dictatorship ended, do you want to talk about the dictatorship ending? It lasted for longer than people think, but officially it's 1970 t- hell, 1973 to um, 1988, I think it was. Yeah, 1988. So 1973 to 1988. Um, but it didn't really end until like late-ish 90s yeah. because of everything that happened after. And then, um, yeah, this is the stuff that has to do like legal stuff to do with. Yeah. Well, anyway, you know, technically, yeah, well, but yeah, 88, it was when it ended. Well, officially. Chile was able to, you know, elect a, a president democratically. Yeah. So yeah. after the, uh, after Schaefer suffered sexual abuse charges in 1987, and we're saying mm-hmm. 1997, he started abusing boys after, be, before the 60s, before he came to Chile, and it's 1997. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Exactly. Like, <laughs> okay, so after sexual abuse charges in 1997, Schaefer flew the country, flew Chile, and disappeared. Mm-hmm. He was prosecuted under, uh, I mean, he was persecuted under Christian Democrat President Eduardo Frey. He was being accused by 26 children that had gone to a free clinic and free school and reported abuse. Uh, mm-hmm. He was tried in Chile in his absence and found guilty in late 2004. This is 2004. Yep. Schaefer was found on the 10th of March, 2005, hiding in a suburb known as Las Acacias, close to Buenos Aires, Argentina. After negotiations were made between Chile and Argentina, in Argentina, uh, Schaefer was sent back to Chile to face a court hearing where he was charged with the disappearance of political activist Juan Maino, disappearance of Russian mathematician Boris Ves- Westfeller, and many human rights abuses. He was also a wanted man in Germany and France in connection with earlier child abuse allegations from the 50s. Mm-hmm. Investigations and 40s. And 40s. Investigations by the Amnesty International and Chilean National Commission for Truth and Reconciliation report have verified that torture, uh, that torture in the colony was used by the DINA. DINA, D-I-N-A, a Chilean secret police, if you will. Uh, let's call it the KGB, call it... Um, what's it? What's the one in in Nazi Germany? The SS? I forgot. But it's it's a Chilean yeah. secret secret police, um, and it was used as a torture and detention center during Pinochet's military dictatorship. This was officially on on record as happening yep. in two thousand five. Yep, this happened in the seventies. Uh, on May twenty, there's actual there's also footage of him being arrested, and it's just it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Well, we'll say why. Okay, so on May twenty fourth, two thousand six, Schaefer was sent to thirty three years in jail for sexually abusing twenty five children, and was ordered to pay seven hundred and seventy millones de pesos, million pesos, one point five million USD to eleven minors whose representatives established suits. Schaefer was later found guilty on 20 counts of dishonest abuses and five counts of child rape, all committed between 1993 and 1997. So those are the only ones that he got charged for. Yeah. Not counting 
all the shit that he did before. On and in two thousand six, he was sentenced to thirty three years for everything that happened before nineteen ninety three. Yeah. And then oh, okay, okay, good. In between 1993 and 1997, he was charged on 20 counts more. On April 24th, 2010, Schaefer died at the Santiago de Chile Ex-Penitentiary Hospital due to heart failure. He was 88 years old, and it was later revealed that he was suffering from severe cardiac arrest. And that's the story of Paul Scumbag Schaefer. Yep. So what we're talking about when we say about the uh, footage when he was captured is just that he has this fucking smug look on his face like he's like it's like a game almost he's like oh you got me i was waiting for you that's technically what he looks like yeah and i want to kill him because he's he was a very old man when they caught him he was in a wheelchair and and everything (laughs) he was in a wheelchair yeah and it's just like fucking drag him out of there I wish they could have just grabbed him by an arm and just, like, drag him out of there. I don't and fucking care if he can walk. I don't know if you saw the footage, but he has, like, a bottle of water. Yeah. And I'm like, he doesn't deserve a bottle of water. No. He's sitting there with, like, trying to... He's, like, uh, adjusting his uh, handcuffs mm. in the car with his bottle of water. And I'm just like, oh, go fuck yourself. Man. Well, um, I saw a, uh, a a documentary on him where they analyzed him psychologically. And he mm-hmm. is an extreme psychopath. With um, oh, 100%. a extreme psychopath. And on the, uh, what's it called? The scale? The scale of evil? The scale of evil. <laughs> the evil scale. So the maximum mm-hmm. is 22. And he is a 21. According to experts. <laughs> this guy I is... I think he's a 23. <laughs> this guy is like one of the, if not the worst sons of bitches to ever exist. Yeah. Yeah. And this was. And I can't believe he got away for so long. That's what I was going to say. He got away say. with it for so, so, so long. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's 2019. He was. He died in 2010. He was charged in 1997. Like, I was. I remember the day that they caught him. I didn't know yeah, what I was going too. on. But I remember the day that they caught him in Argentina. I, I remember. Because we were pretty young when that happened. We were like maybe 13. Yeah, I was 13. Yeah. We're 12 or 13, and um, I already knew a little bit about it, um, because I remember my family kind of, like, sort of talking about it, but not really. Like, they're not going to talk about that in front of us, like, the children. But I do remember that being a big, 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 big deal when, because they have been looking for him forever, and, like, once in a while, there's always a a new new story that will pop up, like, oh, they think that he's here, but... And they go and then I like, investigate and he's not really there. So, yeah, I, I remember being a huge deal that day that they caught him. And I remember, like, the footage being shown in the news. And it's just, like, I was so scared watching He's a it. scary guy. He is. He's a scary guy. And this guy, like, I remember the footage of when they went into the house, when they found him. Like, everything is on YouTube. Yeah. Um, And if, well... We'll say it at the end, but I was going to tell everybody about the movie. <laughs> the Colony? Yeah. So, or uh, Colonia? I don't know. Colonia, yeah. So, uh, The Colony now. What happened after? So, Schaefer? after 2005, uh, The Colony still stands. They're, most of the residents are still there. Um, in a census as of 2002, there were 198 people that was living there. Um, most of them are German. Over a hundred people of them are like German. They don't even speak like Paulo was saying. They don't even speak English or like Spanish. Like they're they barely they're just speak kind German. Of there, yeah, they barely speak German exactly. Um, so still stands the the directors of it though. They they try to rebrand it into a more more like touristic place. So you can come see. There's a there's a hotel. There's a bed and breakfast. There's um there's stores, there's restaurants that so you can come and freely like go visit. You can pay for tours of the uh the places like where they had them. Yeah. Um and uh so now it's called Villa Baviera, which is technically like Bavarian Bavarian it's some German word, like Bavarian Villa. Yeah. 
and they're getting like the directors they try to rebrand her and they're saying that they're a very different organization now and that they don't want conflict with anybody they just want to be there and live and then that it's open to the public yeah if anybody wants to go visit because it's a beautiful place and it's huge it's a very nice place so, yeah. well, and it's huge what we were gonna tell everybody is that i'm actually thinking of going there yeah um, and making like a you said a, 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 a mini documentary yeah to show everybody like what happened if you're interested um uh, please let us know because it's not far away it's totally affordable mm -hmm. it's freaking scary <laughs> and yeah. uh it's it's right there it's something i would really like to do before i leave chile one day <laughs> yeah You should. Yeah. Maybe if I go visit at the end of this year. Ooh. We should go together. That would be fun. That would be really fun. We have to raise money. I do. We do. <laughs> we could go by car. That would be fun. Road trip. Ooh. It's only a, a We take few, Fernanda with us. It's only a few hours <laughs> away because, you know. It is, yeah. So. And actually. Oh, but you want to stay there, no? Yeah, I want to stay a few nights. It's, I was going to say I have family who lives in Los Andes. Oh. So it's like oh, almost right next to it. But it's so, um, it's not expensive to stay there, especially um, like now. Yeah. Like from March to like September, it's mm -hmm. very, very cheap to stay there. Nice. But yeah, basically all the people that are there, uh, well, people that, that got out that were freed, uh, mm -hmm. all they want is to like be left in, in peace some of them even went to like university yeah. some people are there but mm -hmm. the majority of people who are like germans they went back to germany and they're living on welfare yeah because they don't know but the thing is a lot of them also the thing think about this um it reminds me a little bit of uh the dreamers from the states Mm -hmm. that are being deported being deported back and these are children like never lived in their like countries of origin and then they get there and like some of them don't even speak english i mean their language yeah that's what i imagined a little bit and the government is not really helping them that much no a lot of them live in poverty well so okay this is what i have for um is it here So this is like the legal um, stuff that happened after. So what's going on now? So on May 25 of 2011, uh, journalist Amanda Reynoso Pali, um, she is a reporter for the Santiago Times. I didn't know that existed. <laughs> I didn't know that was Apparently a thing. Apparently it's a big newspaper, yeah. That um, she reported that Harmut Hop, so this is the, um, the doctor that... Gave everybody the pills. He was also pills. very, very close to Pinochet. And he would give... He was the director of the hospital who would give, like, basically say yes to all of the torture that they inflicted on people. And uh, so she reported that Hop is, um, fled Chile on board a, um, board a helicopter and was believed to be in Germany. So they did find him. He's actually on, on the documentary. One of the documentaries that I was watching, they, were, they followed him. Oh, And they found him, they followed him, and then they came out to his house, and he was just like, no, no, like, don't talk to me. He didn't say anything, he just, like, went inside of his house. Um, so he was under house arrest, and he was waiting a trial for human rights, uh, because he was he, uh, Paul Schaefer's right hand, right? Um, in June 2016, prosecutors in Germany petitioned a court to enforce a five-year prison sentence that Hop was sentenced um, to an absentia in Chile. So I think he might have gone to jail for five years, but there were petitions that it doesn't say if it did. But on January 28 of 2013, six former, six former leaders of the colony were sentenced to prison by Chile's Supreme Court. But the case was, um, which was prosecuted uh, by Chilean and German citizens for crimes committed in the 1990s was not over yet, according to a story appearing the following day in the Santiago Times. So... Um, They were, I don't know if they were actually sentenced, but they were, um, uh, charged. Oh yeah, no, they were sentenced. What am I saying? Yeah. They were sentenced to prison by Chile Supreme Court because both Germany and, um, Chile author Chilean authorities were like looking for them. So this is people who like literally helped Schaefer and Pinochet, Pinochet do whatever the fuck they wanted. Yeah. 
um so at least that's some of the legal stuff that happened after and i'm just like really glad that that's a freaking miracle some justice it is because that never happens yeah um like there's people from the dictatorship that committed crimes against humanity like the, yeah. human rights violations and they're still free yeah can we talk about what i was telling you um these are just like little loose ends and like little facts so paul schaefer was receiving um pension money for all the elders that were in the community Mm -hmm. and so and none of the elders saw a penny ever and you know what's funnier is that schaefer was receiving an extra uh pension for him because of like who he was back in germany Mm -hmm. and he was keeping all of it of course he was making them work exactly and so, in let me see here. So, 1987, the Ministry of Labor of Germany, his name is Norbert, Norbert Blum, he visited Chile and he had a meeting with uh, Augusto Pinochet and other diplomats. And he told him to his face that he was a pig. We need to take this time to applaud. Yeah. And so they try to kick him out and everybody, like the other diplomats were like, oh, like, how can you say that to him? Like, no, like, you know, nothing but respect for my president. Fuck you guys. <laughs> um, and so they try to kick him out and at the door, Pinochet was like, okay, fine. What do you want to talk about? And he's like, I want to talk about human rights and how you're violating them. And Pinochet kind of laughed and he was like, that's none of your he's like yeah gosh but that's none of your business and he's like um yes it is my business because my people is involved right because they were involving the colony in it mm-hmm. and then he's like and what else do you want to talk about and he's like the other thing that i want to talk about is um wait let me see where is it oh that he wanted to um he wanted in, he was in an intern he wanted to intercept and the detained people, like all the people that was getting detained. And plus, he wanted to talk about um, the financing for like the um, the pensions that were given to the elders, right? Mm-hmm. And so, what happened is that the welfare, so the welfare of Germany was paying these elders all these pensions, but they weren't getting any. And they were like, yo, well, we need to know. Because what he wanted was to get into the colony because they needed to see firsthand who was alive, who wasn't. Right. Because they were like, we only pay people who is alive. And how do we know who's alive and who's not? Right? Mm-hmm. And so what happened is that he convinced Jones Valking, Vo- uh, his name is. So he was the president of the Federal Office of Insurances in Germany. And he convinced him to go and um, try to find out what was going on. Because if not, they're just committing fraud, right? Mm-hmm. And so they go. This was in November of 1988. And he goes up to the colony. He's like, I want to talk to uh, like the members personally, like one-on-one. I want to see who's like, you know, the elderly who are alive. Like, so we know who I'm paying this money to. Like, who are we paying this money to? And they refused. Like, they didn't give him entry. They were like, no, sorry, you can't come in. Yeah. And so after that, he was like, okay, if they're not letting me in, then maybe the elders can come meet me. So he set up a meeting, like, at a hotel outside of, like, in another town close by. And they waited in vain because nobody showed up. Yeah, they weren't allowed out. (laughs) Exactly. And so what happened is that just in January, they just stopped giving them the pensions. They just canceled all the accounts. Yeah. And... Um, that's what I was saying is that throughout this year, so this money was being put into a special account just for them because they were out of the country. And Paul Schaefer was receiving all of it and plus receiving an, his pension and an extra income from like something else. My God. And nobody ever got anything. So that's the type of guy that he was apart from being a fucking disgusting, gross pedophile that should have been killed way before his time. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad yeah. we, we're, we're done with this. 
we're done with this. But yeah, um, the villa still stands. It's called Villa Villa Baviera now, and it's open to visitors. So if if you guys away. if you guys are interested in like a video about it, because you can record inside, you can go inside like where they were torture people and things like that. You can go in like the showers and, and <laughs> things like yeah. that. Let us know, and uh, maybe you could help us finance it. It's not that far away. It's not that expensive, and uh, <laughs> it would be it would be pretty cool. I would love to go. It will be cool. Yeah. Um, and, then gonna, and then we're going to film. So. Can we film there? I feel weird filming. Sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. <laughs> okay, keep going. So uh, I'm so glad we done, we're done with this because like I said last night, I had a dream about it. Yeah. Paula was done with it like I'm yesterday. Done. <laughs> and I can't wait to have lunch finally. <laughs> I was gagging. I'm just so... I'm gonna think about it now. No, it's horrible. So it's, it's, nobody says it's gonna be easy to let go. It's, it's, I'm not, I don't think I'll ever let it go. Mm. But what we have to learn is that, you know, Chile... Chile is a weird country. Justice, <laughs> justice is barely done here. There. Yeah. And, ever. And, you know, at least this guy is dead. Thankfully, and and the colony is is thankfully it doesn't exist the way it did anymore. Yeah, that's all we could say at this point. Was it a cult? I wouldn't call it a cult. I wouldn't call it a cult because, well, yes, in the cult guidelines, yes, but also people. I mean, kids and children do wear their against their will. Mm. Yeah, because it's not. I think against their will because they just didn't know any better. Yeah, well, if you. So I think that's a debatable title for it. Yeah, if you want to watch a really great movie on this, uh, Emma Watson did a movie called Colonia, C O L O N I A. Um, it's her and what's his what's his face? What's his name? Uh, Seba, Seba. Daniel something. Oh, Daniel, Daniel something. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it takes place right when. The... Isn't the guy from Game of Thrones? No, he's from, he's, uh, ah, I know him from, like, a few movies, but I never remember his name. It's a, it's a known dude. Anyway, yeah. uh, it takes it's place, a known dude. <laughs> it takes place right as the dictatorship happens. Uh, yeah. And these two people, Emma Watson and Daniel something, they're trapped inside the colony. And so mm-hmm. uh, this movie was praised by uh, Chileans that lived through the through it, through it yeah. because it's extremely accurate. And uh, they have Schaefer there. They have Pinochet there. Everybody that we've talked about mm-hmm. is there. They talk about, they show tortures. They show, they insinuate because they can't really show uh, sexual abuse, pills, you know, everything. So, yeah. and it'll also make you very mad at this country. <laughs> yeah i feel like we went from like antares de la luz making us mad and now we're like at this we're like really mad <laughs> it's just that antares de la luz was like stupid it's it's dumb it's dumb it's but that's what i was that's what i i told you i don't know yeah. if it's yesterday or today or today before we started recording it was that for example okay Antares de la Luz was pretty bad. It was a cult. That was a fucking cult. Because, I mean, seriously, a bunch of stupid people. Mm. This is adults that decided to go along with it. And they were like, yeah, maybe maybe he's right. Okay, yeah, let's follow him and kill all, our, all of our pets. Um, <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is very different because these were children who were literally kidnapped, separated from their families, and then forced and brainwashed into doing whatever they wanted with them. Yeah. And they just didn't know any better. They didn't know anything else. So we were angry with uh, Antares de la Luz because it was dumb of the people who followed it. But in yeah. this case, we're, we're mad because the authorities in Chile were, are um, idiots. Yeah. And we're not talking about just authorities from Chile. I mean, the fucking German oh, embassy. Obviously, obviously, but all of the authorities in that, that could case have been ever involved in this. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. This whole thing went on for way too long than it was supposed to. 
And then, like, I I believe you if you said, like, oh, this guy abused children from, like, 1960 to 1970. But from 19, you said 1940s was, like, the the first. um... Yeah. And, yeah, so that's when he was first accused, like, hit with accusations of uh, child abuse. And this is when he was a social worker. Yeah. He he worked with children. Yeah. So he's, so it's 1940. And the last abuse he committed was in 1997. And who the hell knows what happened in Argentina with kids? Because there's no, 100%. There's no records. So. It it went on for way too long, it shouldn't have, and people in uh, that live or lived in Villa Baviera or the colony, they deserve yeah. the money and the recognition that yeah. they deserve. You know that they should have from the government because they, they build that place from the ground up, literally, yeah. out of forced labor, and they didn't get a dime. Yeah, they didn't get anything. They only got, you know, trauma and nothing else. That's it. That's it. There's people living on the streets. These are people without education. These are people that barely speak the language. Mm -hmm. Like, no, 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 no. And I'm pretty sure this isn't going to end here. Like, I was like, when I was researching, like, there was stuff about stuff uncovered last year. Yeah. This is going to keep going. There's something that it keeps coming. Like, you'll... We'll probably, we'll, maybe we'll give you updates, maybe we won't. It's just that it's something that, it's always something new that's going to come up out of this. Yeah, totally. There's just so much history. There's so much. There's interviews. Like, the, the you imagine, for example, people from Jonestown. It was the 50th anniversary of Jonestown a few, mm-hmm. like, last year. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah, last year. And these are people that are old, right? Yeah. These people that survived the colony... Some are our age. Yeah. Some are in their 30s. This didn't happen in the 70s, you know, like Jonestown Mm -hmm. that ended in the 70s. This happened in the 90s. 1997, Mm -hmm. when Schaefer flew the country, I was four years old. Yep. And so, yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, this is something that's still going on. It's still being investigated and... I just hope so justice is served. Yep. And yeah. I hope so. I mean That's the end. I, I don't I mean I hope this justice is served, but at the same time that's a lot to ask for. There's a lot of wishful thinking. Oh yeah. I just hope that all the people that went through all of that trauma, they can just find peace. Hmm. Yeah. That's that's literally all I want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all I would hope for for them. Yeah. Well, that's the end of this two-part series yeah. that honestly has been very hard. And um, we've done a lot of research. And I really hope you guys yeah. like it because I think it deserves more recognition in the world. It does. And um, yeah, let's just let's yeah, just end it. Uh, you can follow us on social media at Undercover Govan everywhere, which mm-hmm. means Twitter and Instagram because there's nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> You can also email us at undercovercoven at gmail dot com. Please send us your story. We'll... Please comment yes. if you've known about this. If you are interested in us going, I mean, in me or Ali or whenever you come yeah. going, and um, and let's see what you guys tell us because we thought this would be interesting mm-hmm. for everybody to listen to. Yep. And see you next Monday, everybody, with something I hope is a little bit lighter. <laughs> We will see you. (laughs) Bye. Bye.